Let's set up your production software so that you can start recording music in your studio. There are a few things we'll need before we get started. You'll of course need a DAW or digital audio workstation, which is the software that allows for recording, editing, and processing audio. There are many DAWs available and each one has a slightly different workflow. I'll be using Reaper in this video, which can be downloaded using the link below this video. But the basic steps you'll learn here should apply to whichever software you're using. You'll also need an audio interface, which is used to connect inputs like microphones and instruments, as well as outputs such as studio monitors or headphones to your computer. I'll be using the Universal Audio Volt 2, which connects to my computer via USB, and I've already downloaded and installed all of the drivers from the Universal Audio website, so you should do the same for your interface by searching for drivers on the manufacturer of your interface's website. The microphones, instruments, and cables you'll need will vary depending on what you're recording. If you want to record vocals or an acoustic instrument, you'll need a microphone, but it's also possible to simply connect an electric guitar or bass directly into the instrument input on your audio interface, or to use a MIDI controller to control virtual instrument software within your computer. I'll get to the specifics on each of these techniques later in the video. Let's first set up the DAW to recognize and utilize the physical inputs and outputs on the audio interface. With the audio interface connected to the computer and the necessary drivers already installed, we'll go to the settings or preferences within the DAW. We'll navigate to the audio device settings, and we're gonna check for two things here. First, that the ASIO driver is selected, and second, that the correct audio interface is selected for both input and output. Here, I've got the universal audio volt, and we're using the ASIO driver. You may also see a range of inputs and outputs available for your audio interface. So in this case, I'm gonna select all of the inputs and outputs available. And that just means that later on when I'm using the software, all of the inputs and outputs that are physically on my audio interface will be available within my software to utilize. We also want to check that the sample rate matches the sample rate of our audio interface. This should happen automatically, but to double check, I'm going to pull up the Universal Audio Volt control panel and go to sample rate over here. And yes, I see that 48 kilohertz is being used on the audio interface and that matches what's being used in my DAW software. I'm also going to double check that there's a low enough buffer size that minimizes latency while recording. So this number here is the buffer size. And over here in buffer settings, we see buffer size. A higher number will result in more latency or more delay between the time a signal enters the interface, such as your guitar signal, and the time it takes for it to reach your headphones. A lower buffer size will result in lower latency. If you experience clicks or errors in your audio as we go, you may want to come back to this screen and increase the buffer size to give your computer more time to process the audio but a relatively modern computer should be okay to handle a buffer size of about 64 or 128 samples, especially with a completely blank session like this. So let's start there. I'll finalize these settings by clicking apply, and then I'll press okay to exit out of this preferences window. Now that our software knows the device we want to use for recording and playback, let's create a session or a project within the software. Rather than beginning to record with this blank session, it's really important to do this. I'm going to go to File, Save Project As, and then I'm gonna give this a name. So I'll actually just name it DAW Setup Demo Session 1. And within the folder that I save that, there will be a session file. This is a really important step to do in the beginning so that all of the audio files and our session file stay together. Otherwise, you may find yourself searching all the folders on your computer for the audio recordings the next time you open up this session in the software. Let's create a new track in the software by clicking track, insert new track. I'm going to label the track before moving any further so that the name of my recordings will be easier to identify later on. So let's call this acoustic guitar. It's important to use headphones and turn down your speakers for this step because the audio from your speakers could get into your microphone and ruin your recording. Now to do this, you would normally turn this monitor knob all the way down. Just because of how I'm recording this, I'm not going to do that. But on your interface, go ahead and turn the monitor knob all the way down and use headphones. 
there are two inputs on my audio interface. So I need to tell the software which one of those inputs I want to assign to this particular track. Let's choose input one as the input for this track. In Reaper, you click right here and you select input one. That means all I need to do is connect my microphone to input one on my audio interface. So I'm gonna use an XLR cable. One end goes to the microphone, the other end goes to the audio interface, input one, because that's what we selected on our track. And because this is a Rode NT1, it's a condenser microphone, which means that it requires phantom power. So I'll engage phantom power on my interface. If you're using a dynamic microphone, it doesn't need phantom power. We don't see any activity on the track meter yet, and that's because the track isn't armed for recording. This red button is called the record arm. And when I press that, it will arm the track for recording, which means that audio will be recorded to the track when I press the red record button down in the left corner. This is helpful when recording and layering different instruments, because sometimes you might want to record audio to some tracks while just allowing the existing audio on other tracks to play back. So after pressing the record arm button, I start to see some input level coming from my microphone. Let me grab my guitar. So already I'm seeing about the level we want. I'm gonna make this track a little bit bigger. Yeah, so we wanna adjust our preamp gain knob until, until we get a level between about minus 18 and minus 12 dB full scale on this meter. All right, that looks good. If input monitoring is turned on in the DAW, which is shown right here in Reaper, that means that we'll be listening to the audio as it goes in through the microphone, through the software, and back out through the interface and into our headphones. Right now that sounds great because our buffer size is very low, so there's no delay. However, if you experience delay, you can turn this off and instead use direct monitoring on your audio interface. Just make sure that only one of those is being used at a time, otherwise you'll hear an echo. I'm gonna go ahead and use input monitoring within my software. Once you've got a good level on the meter and you hear the signal in your headphones, go ahead and press the record button. I'm actually going to turn the click on so that I can hear a metronome. Before I get started, I'm just gonna go down here to this BPM button and tap here the tempo of my song. So it looks at about 88 beats per minute. Then I'm gonna turn the click track on up here so I can hear a metronome. And that's it, once I've got a good level on my meter, I can hear the signal in my headphones, I can go ahead and make sure the track is armed and I'll press record. So I can go ahead and disarm the track and just press play to listen to that back. It sounds okay, but I made a few mistakes. So I'm going to select the region, press the delete key and set up again for another take. Okay, that one sounds a little bit better. Good enough for this video. If you're recording an instrument like an electric guitar or bass, you don't necessarily need to use a microphone. In many cases, you can connect your instrument directly to the instrument input on your audio interface. I'm going to connect my bass to input two on my audio interface using a quarter inch instrument cable. I'll disarm the acoustic guitar track and I'll make another track called bass. This time, the track is going to be set for input two. 
and I'll arm that track and get good levels here. Looks like it might be a little bit hot, a little bit too high. Yep. So I'm going to turn that preamp down a little. Now I've ensured that this input is set to instrument mode because usually it's in microphone mode. If your interface doesn't have an instrument mode at all, you might need what's called a DI box between your instrument and your audio interface. You can watch the video that's up linked in the corner. It's all about DI boxes and it'll help you determine if you need one or not. The steps from this point are the same. You just create a new track, label the track, bass in this case, select the input as input two in this case, and make sure that the track is armed. Now I can see level and I'll adjust the preamp gain knob here until I see peaks at about minus 12. All right, I'm ready to press record. Okay, let's go ahead and disarm that track as well. You can also use a MIDI controller and a virtual instrument on your computer for recording. Some DAWs have built in virtual instruments and most of them allow you to use third party virtual instrument plugins that are installed on your computer. I'll be using this Akai MPK mini keyboard that's connected to my computer via USB. I still need to go into my DAW settings to select that controller. So in this case, I'm looking at the MIDI devices and I just want to find my MIDI device under the inputs section, right click it and make sure the input is enabled. I'm using inputs because my MIDI controller is sending MIDI data to my computer as an input to my computer. If the other way around was happening, if the computer was sending data out to my MIDI controller, then I would go down here and enable output to the MIDI device. I'll press apply and then close out of that. Let's make some space here. We'll add a new track and call it keyboard. It's important to note here that some DAWs use special virtual instrument tracks, whereas other DAWs like Reaper use the same kind of track that can take different types of inputs. So I'll select input as MIDI, all channels, of my MIDI controller. Now, when I press record arm, I can see some signal coming in, but it's not audio signal. And that's because MIDI is an audio. MIDI is just control data for triggering the audio within a virtual instrument. So I need to add a virtual instrument to my track by clicking the effects button here. Or if you have a mixer window like this, you can select one of these inserts. And I'm going to find in virtual instrument that I want to use. Let's try this one. Now I can hear audio because the MIDI from my MIDI controller is triggering the virtual instrument to play audio. Okay. With the MIDI track record enabled, I can go ahead and just press record. I don't think I'll be winning any Grammys for keyboard, but that'll get the job done. The cool thing about MIDI is that we're recording the MIDI data, not the audio. So if I want to experiment with different sounds in my MIDI virtual instrument, or even use a different virtual instrument, I can swap them out while maintaining the same performance data. In other words, I can experiment with playing different instruments without the need to re-perform the song again. Once you've got a recording within your session, you can start to process that audio with EQ, compression, and endless other tools. 
Most DAWs have the basics built in, and you can also download and install third-party plugins. To load a plugin on a track, you do the same thing as we did with the virtual instrument. You can either select the effects here or use one of these inserts for your track. So I'm going to put an EQ on my acoustic guitar track. Now that I've got this EQ loaded on my acoustic guitar track, when I play back the audio, I'll hear the effect of this EQ in real time so that I can dial in the sound. Let's turn off that click track and So you could go through each of these instruments, adding EQ to some of them to clean up the frequency balance, adding some compression to clean up the dynamics, and that's mixing. You can add multiple to each instrument, as you can see here. So I've got a EQ on my acoustic guitar track, but I can also add a compressor. So, you just add whatever you think is required for your song. You can save your project by clicking File and Save Project, just like you would in any other computer software. Now, when you close the program and come back later, everything will be as you left it. If you want to open the session on another computer, though, it's important that all of the project files and the audio files are saved to the same project folder you created in the beginning. If not, you may get an error message that says that the audio files are missing, and then you'd have to go find the audio files. It's a big mess. It's best to start by creating a session folder so that everything is saved there from the beginning. You also need to ensure that the plugins and instruments that you used in your project are also installed on any other computers that you wish to open the project with. When you've reached the point where you want to render your project to an audio file, that can be listened to and shared without needing the DAW session, you'll need to export your song. This can be done by selecting File, and then either selecting Render, as it says here, or sometimes it's called Export or Bounce to Disk, depending on the software you're using. When I click this, it will prompt me to create a session name. I'm going to create version 1.0. It'll also give me the opportunity to select a file directory path. I'm just gonna put mine with the rest of the project files. And here you can select the sample rate. I'll use 48 kilohertz. I'll make a stereo file so there's left and right in one file. And when I click render, it's going to create a stereo wave file that can be played back on any device with or without the need of a DAW software. If you wanna learn the next step for good recording, watch this video next. I'll see you over there.